Welcome to the European Rally Championship 2018. And it's already the last round of what has been a thrilling season. And for the second consecutive year, the season finale will be held in Latvia, next to the Baltic Sea. This is Rally La Paia, and this is a season showdown of the European Rally Championship. Round eight of the ERC takes us up north to La Paia, which was first run in 2013 and originally set as a winter rally, but switched to the autumn for 2016 and became an all new rally as crews had to adjust to the gravel stages free from snow and ice. But it remains a thrilling, spectacular spectator event as well. High speed action on the ERC. So we've been right across Europe this year and the ERC season has been stitched up with Alexi Lukanuk taking the top step of the podium, winning on the first year. Alexi Lukanuk secured the title on the penultimate round of the season despite having to retire in Poland last time out. <laughs> He's the most successful driver of the 2018 season, winning in the Azores, the Canary Islands, and Italy as well. The Russian Rocket won 30 special stages in his Ford Fiesta R5, by far the most impressive total of any driver this season. But with one win and two podiums, Bruno Magalhaes challenged Alexei Lukanuk and even took the lead of the championship in Cyprus but unfortunately he couldn't race here towards the end of the season due to budget issues. Latvia is the last round of the under 27 championship and Martin Sex has already sealed that one but is looking for home victory on his soil. He grew up in the town of Lipaya. Sex is only 19 years old, but he wants to do well in front of his home crowd. Previous years in, 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 in my home rally, I never finished uh, like happy guy because I, I crashed, then my uh, car uh, broke down and then some other things. And the main goal for, for this rally will be to enjoy, enjoy my home roads, enjoy my uh, last rally this year with the team and uh, to finish rally at all. And, uh, and then I think if I will do everything I need to do, the result will come by itself. In the under-28 category, the title is still up for grabs, with Nikolai Gryzen having the lead of seven points ahead of Chris Ingram and eight points ahead of Fabian Crime after Poland. That's three drivers all experienced differently. For me, it was the first time to, to drive on, on, on gravel roads like this and also for my co-driver, so it was a completely new experience for, for us. But I would say we have managed it quite good, but it was... Yeah, quite tough, a very, very difficult rally. But for Chris Ingram, nature had a little surprise for him in store in Poland. But was it really nature? It was a Russian spy deer <laughs> sent from Yaroslav Fedorov. <laughs> <laughs> a massive surprise. Uh, distracted me for the next few corners, but pretty cool, pretty cool to see. But there wasn't anything quite as eventful for Gryzin, who took the overall win in Poland. Poland was a really fun race for us. It was very good that it was um, sunny days, not rain. Sometimes a little bit scary because if you make a big mistake, you can have a huge crash. That but quick. we are not thinking about <laughs> it. So. Much faster engine, I think. <laughs> The under-28 leader, Gryzin, doesn't plan on going flat out here in Latvia for the overall win. For me, it's uh, important to have a good position under-28, so I need to be um, not, not stupid and try to be calm, not to push everywhere, so it will be dangerous, so I will try to be smart. Last year I was battling for the under-27 title here in Latvia, and um, I was probably the underdog going into that rally as well against Yari Hutton and but as you know anything can happen in rallying and Nikolai's had an incredible season and developed massively so he'd probably deserve to win it but like I said anything can happen and we need to be here making sure 
if something does, we, we can take advantage. And with less experience on gravel, Fabian Crime is clearly the outsider in this big, tough battle. We have nothing to lose, that's, that's right, of course. We, we try, we try to, to give everything. But in a normal way, we haven't, haven't any chance against Nikolai. In Poland, we were at the end a little bit behind Chris, but this time we try to, to change the, the position that maybe we get the, the second place in the, in the championship. So far, everything seems fine between these three drivers. Until now, we are friends. Maybe it will change tomorrow. Or <laughs> Lipaya is the theatre. It's all set for the final round on the west coast of Latvia. Now in its sixth edition of this popular ERC rally. Fastest in the qualifying stage, well, there's no surprise, it was Nikolai Gryazin. He was first to choose his starting position for leg number one. Strategy will be to start 12th on the road and not to be penalised by the loose gravel on the top surface. Fabian Crime and Chris Ingram were ahead of him on the road, taking the same strategy. They will line up 7th and 10th on the road, but Paolo Nobre, all the way from Brazil, will have the honour of running first on the road as the first competitor here. The Brazilian was the penultimate driver to select his road position for leg one, selecting first on the road. ERC2 category frontrunner Sergei Remenik is second on the road. So after sealing the ERC title in Poland, it was Alexei Lukanuk who decided to turn up and mentoring Sergei Remenik here and playing a little bit of his rock guitar at the opening ceremony, which is actually quite good for the Russian. So we are the champions being played to the crowd in the centre of Leopaya to get the ceremonial start underway. So Lukanuk was in town with his guitar, but out in the stages this is what it was looking like for Saturday as we head east into the countryside. Six stages scheduled for the first day, a total of 111 and a half competitive kilometres. Classic format, three stages, back to service, and then back out to do it all again in the afternoon. So Paolo Nobre, first on the road this morning. He had exactly the same job to do when we were on the loose surface in Poland last time out. Road sweeping the loose gravel off the top surface. Cleaning the road. Wukush Havai next up. Good speed for him. Wukish is driving an SRT prepared Skoda this weekend, so that's prepared by the team here in Latvia, so you think he's going to get some good times laid down. Had sixth place here. Satisfied with his fifth position overall after the first loop. We had a good run, I think first part I was uh, too slow and too cautious, but the second part uh, was better, so uh, in general no problems whatsoever, so we had a pretty good morning. The least experienced of the three under 28 title contenders on gravel, the German Fabian Krein was cautious with the fifth fastest time in stage number one. On stage two he raised his speed, avoiding any mistake using all the road in places and in the morning loop fourth overall 22.3 seconds behind the leader of the event Frederick Arlen drove cautiously on the first stages. Bear in mind that he hasn't been in a rally car for a number of events. Even so, he showed the gravel was his favorite surface for the Swedish driver. Finishing 
third behind the favourites Nikolai Gryzin and Chris Ingram at the end of the first loop of the first morning. Arlen missing a couple of rallies on the ERC this season while his co-driver's girlfriend gave birth to their second child. Still we are a little bit too cautious in, in the fast bit, so uh, it's just seat time, you know. I haven't been on, in the car in rubber since May, so we just need to keep on working, but it's getting better and better for sure, definitely, step by step. Uh, made uh, two or three mistakes in junctions here, just brake a little bit too late and went wide, so three or four seconds there, but for sure the time looks better now, so yeah, we, we are getting into it. Getting into it is the Brit Chris Ingram. Chris sealing his under-27 junior title here in Latvia last year but also with limited seat time on gravel in the R5 Skoda, sliding wide on the first stage of the day. Lucky to get away with that, he was in second place in the rally after stage number one, but stage two proved to be more challenging for him. A helicopter following Chris across the Latvian countryside. Finishes the loop of stages, 10.6 seconds behind the leader of the event. Not bad work for him this morning. Really enjoyable in such a quick car. The, the slides we're having, it's just so much fun. That stage was a lot tidier for us. No risks at all and the time's pretty good. So we're trying to find a nice balance because I think on the last one we were a bit too flat out. So Nikolai Gryazin is the under 28 championship leader and wins all three of the morning stages during leg number one. Certainly wasn't a walk in the park for Gryazin. Halfway through stage two, he spun, loses time. Needs to reverse the car to rejoin the stage. But despite a very stupid mistake, as he said, which calmed him down a little bit for stage number three. The Russian kept his rivals out behind him. So he blasts away with the lead of the rally. Pushing hard this weekend to take a win here for the second time in Latvia and also the under 28 title. Very safely, not pushing too much in some places here. He's uh, beautiful in some scary places. Just lift the pedal because on the second stage, oh shit moment, and after I just don't want to do a big mistake, so just, just be calm. Grazin has taken all his momentum from his win in Poland to Latvia this weekend, leading leg one at the midpoint by 10.6 seconds over Chris Ingram, Frederick Arlen, showing a strong pace this morning with several months without racing. He's lying in third overall. So the season showdown continues on the loose stuff here in Latvia. Round eight of the championship is wrapping up nicely. Will Gryzen continue to hold his perfect lead? We're back in Latvia for the 2018 ERC season finale. It's an incredible Indian summer. Three more stages to go today in leg number one. The weather is just perfect this time of year. Even though the under-27 championship has been signed, sealed and delivered on the last time out, it's all still to play for on the Latvian roads. And Sindra Furaseth from Norway in the Opel Adam R2 is out in front in an encouraging third position at the beginning of the rally. And after stage five, he lost a potential podium. The Norwegian was forced to retire with an oil leak. His season's been plagued by problems in the Opel. We'll see him back next year. As for Mika Hockenen, he had a podium in Poland and was on target in the top three in Lepaya. After making some mistakes in the morning, he drove clean in the afternoon. In the service park, Halfway through the day, he found some good setups with more grip in the rear of the car for the final loop of three stages on day one. Home hero Martin Sex, cementing that under 27 championship, wants to rebuild his confidence after crashing twice in Poland. 
His main goal is to finish the rally and shine in front of his home fans. Second all day long, couldn't catch his teammate Tom Christensen though. After Poland, the crash means a lot in the, in the mind, but uh, we are fighting with it and, uh, and I think we are improving better and better. Winner last month in Poland and his teammate Tom Christensen in the Opel. Wants to beat Martin Sex, of course. Put the cat amongst the Mitchens in the uh, Opel camp. But on leg one, nobody could follow his rhythm. Swedish driver won all stages. He leads the junior under 27 category, but not without problems today. So what does Tom Christensen think of the, uh, the day? And how's the car performing? All good? I think I have some uh, gearbox issues here in the, in the last part of this stage. So I think we need to, uh, to change gearbox on the service. So uh, you also need to have some, some luck in, uh, in everything here. <laughs> Seems all good for him anyway, fix that gearbox and finally Oliver Solberg, son of the 2003 World Rally Champion Petter Solberg. At only 17 years of age, he's not eligible to compete in the ERC under 27 class just yet. But anyway, he showed his impressive speed on the Latvian stages today, same rhythm as sex. And for sure, he'll be a strong contender in the ERC next season. This is the results after day number one in the junior under 27 class. Christensen out in front. In ERC2, Sergei Remenik was back, being mentored by ERC champion for 2018, Alexei Lukanuk, the Russian contender, is learning the gravel roads in the Mitsubishi Evo this weekend. Tibor Erdi has moved up to the R5 car for this event. So Remenick is just learning the car. Emma Falcon from Spain tied on points in the ladies' battle this weekend. Emma drives for the first time a brand new car, switching from the Citroen to the Peugeot for this event. She had a spin on stage six and finished second. Behind Katie Munnings, who made a gravel debut here in 2016, more experienced on this surface than Emma Falcon, but it's still all to play for in the ladies' title. So back to the sharp end of the action now. After a fast but slippery morning stages, the crews head on to the identical loop for the afternoon stages. Only stage three is just reshaped to make it a little bit longer when it's runner stage six. But this is Tibor Erdi. Winning the ERC2 championship earlier this season, the family have bought a new R5 car and this is his debut for it. The car looks great, the service park setup is also pretty good as well for the Erdies. Laurent Pellier finishes ninth in every stage of state leg one. But at the end of the day in stage number six, alarm bells are ringing on the dashboard of the 208T16. He coasts into the final stage of the day and has to push it most of the way home, retires from the event and from the season. As for Lucas Habai, more drama for Habai. He gets a front right puncture at the end of stage number six. The Polish driver couldn't avoid a rock on a racing line, losing time in the final stage. Remains in fifth overall at the end of the day. Ivan Brynielsen from Norway, new co-driver for him this weekend. Co-driven by the amazing Ilka Miner alongside him. Hasn't competed in a rally since three months ago and switching his pace notes from Norwegian to English for this event. Didn't put him off his game plan though on the fast Latvian roads, finishing up sixth overall at the end of the day. As for Frederick Arlen, third in the rally at the midpoint. The Swede struggles a bit in the afternoon with the grip. Only sixth fastest in stage number five. Loses ground to Fabian Crime and finishes the day fourth position overall, only two seconds away from the podium. Arctic. On board with Fabian Crime, you can see how wide these roads are in Latvia. And of course, the high speed on the bottom right of the screen. Topping the cars out at about 180 kilometers an hour here. Crime, a specialist on tarmac, still learning the gravel here. Fighting with Arlen and Habai all day long. Keeps the upper hand at the end of the day, finishes the leg in third position overall. 
Chris Ingram's in second. Second fastest through in stage four and stage five. Ingram keeps pushing, really enjoying these flat out stages. Ingram's in fighting spirit. Max right half over crest, 60. Wide flat, two right half. Last time he was here was last year, driving the two wheel drive Opal. So the scenery is moving slightly quicker outside the window for Ingram at the end of the day. Seals the fastest time in the final stage of the day for him. Still second overall. Yeah, yeah, it's been a fantastic day to be honest. Uh, really pleased with our development on these fast gravel roads. Like Nikolai, he's born and bred on these roads, isn't he? So to be near to him on some of the stages is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's been all positive. Continuing his domination out in front with wins in stage four and stage number five. Nikolai Gryasin seems to be steering towards a perfect six out of six, but that wasn't to be in the final stage of the day when Ingram took the stage win there. However, Gryasin suffered a rear left puncture in stage number six, two kilometers from the end of it. He was so close to losing the lead of the rally. Gets to the end of the stage. Still cool, calm, and very, very relaxed, the Russian driver. Wheel changed. Amazing that it didn't pop off the rim. Let's see what he has to say. No hits. Just drive uh, carefully and somewhere. Uh, I think after the middle, I start feeling it's getting worse, worse, and after it's... Uh, on the right corners it's impossible to drive too much tight and uh, near the finish, two kilometers, uh, the uh, tires blow and we drive maybe on the disc, but it's, it smells bad and the uh, car is not accelerate like it was, but yeah, I think we're not lost too much, but okay. Nikolai Gryzin, he's a really nice guy, very quiet at the stage ends though. Very descriptive too. And at the end of the day, after six stages, Gryzin's out in front. Only lost 0.6 of a second, even though picking up that puncture. So it's all going to come down to the final kilometers of the ERC. Who will win the under 28 category? The season showdown continues in a moment. This is the ERC, and this is the final day of the season, the big push home. All is set for a thrilling finale in the Latvian countryside. The fight goes into the woods today as we head east. Out from Leopaya on the Baltic coast. Three more stages, and then to service. Back out again in the afternoon to do it all again, to wrap it up for what has been an incredible ERC season. So six stages lie in wait for these drivers. Helmets are on, eyes are focused. The calm before the storm. This is the last day of the ERC. And Orhan Ojoglu from Turkey. Driving the top sport prepared car, teammates to Chris Ingram. Orhan today has the unenviable task of sweeping the road clear He finished leg one in 11th position overall, but with Laurent Pellier retiring overnight, he's got the job of being first on the road today. And off the road in the first stage, rejoining. Wuka Shabai. He made the podium on the ERC in Latvia here last year. He was fifth at the end of leg number one, but is struggling on Sunday today. Loses some ground and drops down to sixth position at the midday. Almost lost 20 seconds behind Ivan Brunilson. But as he was saying to us at ERC Radio, he's leading the ERC Polish Championship. He's the only Pole that's here. We haven't seen Ivan Brunilson since the Acropolis rally in June, where he's co-driven by Veronica Elgin. 
Elkins co-driving for Oliver Solberg this weekend. So Ilka Miner's in the co-driver's seat this time. Flat to six right. To keep left. 50. Short four right. Blue. Still fighting to keep the lead here, pushing the leaders hard. Manages to change positions with Wukush Habai and moves up to fifth position overall. And Brynilsson determined to gain some pace in the afternoon stages. I want this third place more than ever, so uh, the guys have to really look after their places now because after service we are back in the woods and they're back into the forest. I mean, and and it's going to be even more exciting, I think, because then we are not so much flat out. Much more confidence on uh, tarmac, but, but uh, continuing uh, to learn how to drive the, the Fabia on gravel. A difficult start for the day for Fabian Prime. In right, Holt, he gets a full. 250. But then an absolutely uh, flawless right, drive for him in stage number nine. All uh, right, twin. In links for 100, links for plus 100. Capitalizing on the sweat lines from the previous right. ERC competitors on the loose gravel stages in Latvia, Klein is confident. Pushing Frederick Arden for that elusive third position. Only 1.3 seconds separate both drivers. The fight for the podium is on. As for Frederick Arlen, he's back in the car, having missed rallies in the Czech Republic and Poland. Like leg one, he starts in a strong position and struggling for grip occasionally. At the moment, he's third in the rally. setting fastest times in the morning stages. Arden is certainly got some pace today. Again, a little bit struggling here on the second loop. Uh, quite a lot of movement in the car towards the end, so just try to be quite steady and safe in the beginning of the stage, just try and make it better towards the end. So it seems like I've improved on that case as well. Leg two starts like leg one has finished, with Chris Ingram pushing hard to try to put the rally and the under-28 leader Nikolai Grise in under pressure this morning. But the reigning ERC junior under-27 champion, crowned here in Latvia last year, is enjoying these flat-out stages. Over 120. Breaks one right into early four left or a tight crest in the state. His relationship with Ross Witter calling the pace into notes is one year long. old this event. Up into flat five right, cut over crest, use 100. Big moment for him in stage Max number nine. Crest, minus breaks right over 60, tightened six right. And nine left round, use. Repeat, nine left round, use 150. Ingram losing time to Gryazin, but still stays firmly in second place on the final round of the season. The gloves are off. Yeah, we just had a massive moment on the right hand near the end. Just way too fast, and uh, we were lucky to, to be on the road, to be honest. But in the quarry at the start, there was like massive rocks. I was just driving around them, so... We've lost time in there, but it's not too bad. What is it with Russians on these roads? Alexey Lukanuk's won this event in the past. He's now ERC champion. Out in front is Nikolai Gryazin. He's from Russia too. He wants to be ERC under 28 champion. He scored his first win in the ERC here in Leopaya last year. And today he is on the limit, dominating his rivals. 
on these fast flowing open roads. 140. Heading for a perfect morning with three stage wins. Gryzins tightened his belts this morning, extends his lead now to 36.8 seconds over Chris Ingram. Is he pushing? A little bit pushing. Uh, some places was really cool. In a carrier we hit a stone. It's good that I have no puncture, but after it's flat out everywhere, it's too fast section so i think everyone <laughs> just have uh, pedal to the metal and just see how it goes so after a perfect morning gryzin leads comfortably heading into the final three of the season behind him the battle for third place is fierce and raging as ever between frederick arlen fabian crime is only 1.3 seconds behind him at the moment all to play for in the final three Let's get back to the big boys in a bit, but in the first turn. But for the moment, let's just have a look with the ERC Junior Championship, see how that's getting underway. Welcome to the ERC. This is Latvia, and we're heading into the final three stages, but before we do that, Let's find out what's going on in the Junior Championship. Young faces with great talent battle for the ERC Junior Under 28 victory here in Latvia. You got Roland Steneg all the way from Austria driving one of the Opel Adam Buzz boxes. He's improving his driving skills on gravel. Scored his best result in the ERC Juniors. His consistency allowed him to finish fourth overall. And Mika Hopkinen, third fastest on all stages today, repeats his uh, overall podium finish for the second time in a row. Jumps from eighth to six. Looking good in the championship standings for him. Martin Sex, who is probably describing himself as a local hero this weekend, bringing home the silverware in the under-27 class this season, cementing that last time out in Poland. Won three stages out of six today. Wasn't good enough to beat his teammate, though. Sex needs to tighten up a little bit. Well, for sure, we have uh, done everything we needed to, to be done. And, uh, yeah, uh, one year ago, I, maybe I, I thought I will next year will be a Latvian champion, but not the UFC. Unbeatable this weekend, Sex's teammate Tom Christensen. From the beginning to the end, Christensen has dominated the rally. All he had to do today was just control the event, securing his first podium position with a 20 second gap. He wins his second victory in a row in under 27. I actually had really, really hard to find words here now. I'm really, really happy to uh, do a successful end of this fantastic season with uh, with the fantastic team, it feels really, really good. Um, to a double win with the, in the end of the season is just fantastic. Good on him. And finally, Oliver Solberger, just 17 years old. He promised to be a bright future star here in the ERC, I'm sure of it. But he had to retire because his engine packed up in the last loop of stages. He impressed a lot this weekend, though, with amazing drive and style. We'll see him soon. He was matching the speed of sex in places. So this is the way that we wrap up the final ERC junior podium of the season. Christensen on top, Sex second, Hockenen third. A Swede, a Latvian and a Finn. Amazing stuff from the juniors. Sergei Remenek won his first ERC2 rally this year in Latvia. It wasn't without problems having power steering failure on stage number nine. That was repaired in service at the midpoint of the day. And with his victory, he finishes second in the ERC2 championship. Katie Munnings, despite being the fastest girl of the weekend, Katie couldn't get the title in the ladies category. Focused on her position in the junior under 27 class, ending it in fifth overall. So this lady, Emma Falcon, in the new equipment, 
as enough points to safely secure the ladies' trophy for 2018. All the way from Las Palmas and Gran Canaria, good on you, Emma. In ERC4, all three of them were out in front today. Horses out in the countryside. So the afternoon stages are underway then. Stage 10, 11 and 12, wrapping up the season. It's the final three, the big push, the season showdown. Philip Maris is there, hats off to him. Limited time on gravel this year, Maris and Reese Yates have been pushing hard. Solid drive for them. Six overall for the Czech driver. Seventh position for Reese Yates, the British driver. Both of them have been battling hard in the same equipment. This is Ivan Bredilsen, big drama for the Norwegian driver. Pushing hard. And into the trees. Both Ivan and Ilka are okay after this monumental roll. Car destroyed, the windscreen was okay though. They won't be restarting. Lukasz Habaj, the 2015 Polish champion, still learning on gravel, happy with his progress this weekend and over the ERC season, finishes up here fifth overall. So this is it then. Only 1.3 seconds separate Fabian Kreim and Fabrik Arlen for third place. No room for errors in the final three. What's going to happen? This is Arden. In stage number 10, he sets the fastest time. Immediately pushing pressure on Fabian Kreim. Made a small mistake in stage 11. They head into the final stage, just point one of a second separating the two of them. It all comes down to stage 12, pushing hard, commits no mistakes. Yeah, if, if he beats me, it's, it's fair play. We... I mean, for sure, you always can find one or two seconds, but generally a very, very good stage. Both of us said to, to each other when we came to the end that uh, it was good. So if he's faster, I mean, it's been a good fight, so... Uh... So with Arlen already completing the stage, he didn't know whether he had pushed enough to beat Fabian Crime in the last stage of the event. Young German driver gives it everything to end the season on the podium. Big moment for him in stage 12, though. The beginning of the stage, he calms down a little bit, though. Very, very lucky to get away with that one. Disappointing finish for the German. He finally has to settle for fourth place overall. We have pushed so hard, and nearly after the start, we had almost the wall. So, yeah, it was quite on the limit, and after that, we, yeah, we, we don't try to push again, and so, yeah, that's rally. An impressive drive for Chris Ingram. The British driver showed that his progress on gravel in the R5 car has progressed this weekend. And with 20-second advantage over the third position of the morning loop, he managed the gap in the final three stages of the event. He finishes second overall in Latvia, runner-up in the under-28 class this year. Not bad for his first season in a four-wheel drive car. Every rally Chris has started this season, he's finished on the podium. Despite retiring from the Canary Islands and missing Cyprus and Greece due to an illness, he fought back in the R5 car. Not bad. Yeah, it's been an incredible debut year for us. First time, you know, I stepped into the four-wheel drive car was the start of the year and we're competing against some incredibly quick drivers that have been in these cars for years. So I think we can come back next year and win it now. We've got the experience. Fighting talk for Chris Ingram. Let's see what he can deliver in 2019, but eyes focused on Nikolai Gryazin now. He's leading the event with 36.8 seconds going into the final stage. He's been impressive all weekend. With eight stage wins out of 12, he's outpaced his rivals and is heading for victory 
in Latvia for the second year in a row and to seal the under-28 championship for 2018. Across the line. I'm really satisfied with it and I don't have words seriously because emotions too much. So there we have it, Nikolai Gryazin and Fedorov out on top by 43.3 seconds over Ingram. Freda Garlin in third. Fabian Krein just missing out on that fourth position overall, but not too bad. So with the service park being dismantled as the SRT team and the rest of them are all ready to make the long road trip home after a great rally out here in Leopaya, Gryazin brings the car home. Everybody anxious to get to the end of season party. So this is the way it looks then. Eight rounds of eight here on the ERC. Look and looks out on top. Gry is in second with 129 points. Don't know what it is with the Russians this season, but they're dominating the ERC at the top. Down into Leopaya and the usual pomp and ceremony to wrap up the season. It's so all three on the podium with the champagne spraying. That's all it then. 2018 season, it's all done. But before we wrap up the program, let's look back at our heroes of the season. With Alexei Lukanuk leading and winning ERC1. Maximum points for him in the season. Tibor Erdi took ERC2 in the production category. Nikolai Gryazin won the under 28 class here in Leopaya. Martin Sex took it in Poland in the under-27 class. In the ladies' trophy, it was Emma Falcon who took that title this year. And for the teams, it was the ADAC Opal Rally Junior team who took maximum points here this season on the ERC. So we've been right across Europe when we started in the Azores at the start of the year. To the heat of the summer sunshine, the ERC will be back in 2019 for another spectacular season. From all of us at the programme, goodbye.